So now in this video, we have a switch, a transistor switch right there. I'm going to use the 2N 3904. If you're looking at the flat uh, side, left pin is emitter, middle pin is base, right pin is collector. So I got it turned to the right right there. So emitter, base, collector. But in any case, it's a switch. We have the power supply set to 5 volts. It's not quite an on-off switch though. So I'm going to give it a signal by closing the button. You can see LED turns on completely right there. I release the button though. The LED stays on for a while. Uh, mostly due to the capacitor value right there, 100 uh, microfarad, and um, actually we don't have a long time that we can do this. Although that's going to look like it's on a long time, it's actually fading down. And uh, we got a 10K uh, resistor right there. So you need a small amount of base to emitter current to get many times, you know, maybe it's 100 times, maybe it's 200 times. Also varies a bit as the temperature of the transistor changes and stuff. It's not perfect, um, but in any case, um, somewhere around 100, 200 uh, times whatever the base to emitter current is the transistor will let a uh, flow from collector to emitter uh, Not very hard to get above uh, I think uh, with the five volts we're only getting like three milliamps of current uh, right here So we just need to get uh, like one percent of that going through base to emitter to get it on fully as it drops You know somewhere below that then the collector to emitter current also drops and the LED fades so um, main thing is we got uh, changing voltages that are of interest. So a good one to look at is the capacitor voltage right there. So we will do that with an oscilloscope. So now here we have a low price uh, pocket oscilloscope and it's got a cable that comes out to these alligator clips. We got the uh, black alligator clip coming to this green jumper that I plugged into the negative supply. So that's where we've got our zero volts where that uh, yellow arrow is uh, pointed at. Uh, be careful though, you can actually lower the yellow arrow um, below uh, this uh, line right there and not realize it because the arrow stays there, although this line may be a lot lower than you expect. So, in any case, uh, we got uh, zero volts because the capacitor is uh, discharged. It actually should be about half of a volt, but the oscilloscope's got some resistance, not a lot, you know, but some resistance that it ultimately discharges the capacitor all the way. The base to emitter of the transistor doesn't um, discharge it all the way. So in any case, there you can see, we got about five volts, rapidly discharges, 100 microfarad capacitor, 10,000 ohm resistor, uh, discharges really quickly. Um, but the main thing is, we just need uh, at least 0.6 volts across the base to emitter. The extra voltage goes across the resistor right there that the capacitor has and current will flow. Again, we just need a very small amount of current to get the LED to, to glow and we don't even need a ton of current to get it to turn on completely. So we'll do this really quick. Right there you can see how fast it goes down. It's kind of hard to tell when we lose uh, saturation right there, when we've got enough base to emitter current to get the LED to conduct fully. So first off, let's look at uh, one principle. So we're gonna go across the resistor because the LED drops voltage, so it kind of throws things off. But there you can see, we got about five volts. Uh, where uh, I'm showing where the uh, resistor and the LED connect together right there. So it's about five volts at the supply, and you can see five volts on the other side right there. There's uh, really no voltage difference. The LED drops uh, voltage, so there you're going to see that uh, it's uh, about 3 volts lower because uh, blue LEDs drop about 3 volts. So right now I'm measuring where the collector is. But again, we'll go to the resistor and um, you can tell like when it's uh, saturated because I got about 3 or 2 volt drop right there. So 2 volts across the resistor because the LED is dropping 3 volts. And as long as that voltage remains steady, current's flowing steadily. So we got about two milliamps of current flowing as long as there was uh, no voltage difference. And now current's going down. There's less voltage difference. Uh, we got five volts on one side. We're getting closer to five volts on the other side. You can see the LED fade right there. So that's one way to tell when you're saturated. In this case, uh, the voltage holds steady uh, right there with uh, about three volts because of the blue LED. So that voltage drop uh, may be a little bit confusing. We can go to the uh, collector right there and you're seeing it go up and uh, for some reason, uh, there's kind of a loose connection. So there we go, it's going up. Let's uh, get right to it though. Press a button, that definitely saturates the capacitor. Now it's connecting to ground. So we got the 
jumper, basically our, I guess you could say probe, to the collector. It's conducting enough where, as far as the oscilloscope can tell, it's a direct connection to ground. There is a very small amount of, uh, you know, basically resistance, but practically not. Basically, it's a direct connection to ground. Then I uh, release the button, and you're going to see the voltage start going up at some point. So it's not a direct connection to ground anymore. The, the uh, transistor is limiting current. And based on how much the load wants, it determines like how much voltage is going to go up. So again, we got the blue LED. We're not going to get above about uh, 2 volts right there because it drops about 3 volts again. Main thing was, I'll just do a real quick press once I get a good connection. Right there. So there we go. Drops instantly. And then uh, you can count how many squares. Looks like about 4 squares. About 4 seconds. We got uh, 1 second per division before it starts going up right there so very important that you understand the uh, voltages there again you can just get a cheap oscilloscope and actually look at those voltages but it's very important you understand uh, when you got that uh, changing voltages how the voltages are changing now let's look at uh, a challenge you might have when you start measuring uh, you know somewhat higher uh, voltages so we got uh, one volt per division really easy to look at uh, you know the display here when you're working with 5 volts uh, anything less than 8 volts we are above the line right now let's actually go back to the capacitor first so it's basically at discharged and uh, so again we got 1 volt per division so even though we raise the supply voltage that's kind of regulating the base 2 emitter the oscilloscope's going to discharge it more though um, but uh, if we didn't have the oscilloscope attached it's going to stay about half a volt approximately for a long time. And again, as I said before, this yellow line is uh, where the uh, green voltage is right there, a black alligator clip. I can press this button. I can change where that is. You can see it rises right there. So at some point, that line will go down to where the arrow is. So I want to get right when I get to that the bottom stop because I can lower it. And then uh, you can see like that line disappears. Well, it's down at the bottom. It didn't disappear, but... Um, it's not displaying where it actually is. So let's get that arrow back down and then uh, press the button. Now we can change the voltage per division. So we're going to go, got to go counterclockwise. Two volts per division right there. And try not to get the lamp uh, covering. Now, when I press the button, the capacitor will charge to 12 volts, but it's going up six squares. So that's not six volts, that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve right there volts and you can see drops really rapidly still as I release the button and um, so LED basically looks like it's on completely red LED probably looks like it fades quicker um, but yeah now you can definitely see it fading down and again we can do the same thing um, probably the out the uh, collector voltage is the best to do right there so it's not connected to ground right there uh, again the blue LED is dropping about three volts so, um, looks like uh, about uh, two volts away from the uh, positive supply on there. But uh, yeah, we'll press the button. It connects directly to ground right there. As long as it stays directly to ground, it's saturated. So again, looks like uh, we bought a little bit more time. Looks like about five seconds instead of four from the lower uh, voltage. Um, but again, higher voltage, the capacitor is going to pass more current. So it's going to discharge. Uh, quicker um, but we did buy a little bit more time since we we're working with a higher voltage something to be aware of so um, in any case uh, that's about it so we could also look at the value of the resistor again and uh, it's up to the supply voltage because uh, hardly any currents flowing uh, through right now it's trickling through but yeah again there you can see we got the about three volt drop of the LED, so that's one and a half squares for three volts now. That we changed it to two volts per division. And there we go. Now it's up to, you know, close to 12 volts. Not a lot of current is flowing, but blue LEDs are like that. They, you know, give a fair amount of light even without much current flowing through them. One reason why they're useful, and I think you see them on so many portable devices. But uh, yeah. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.